Okay. Um, so our next section here that we're going to talk about is titled The End of World War I. And we kind of took a mid-war break to, to look at what happened in Russia. We know that on the eastern front of World War I, um, the war between Russia and Germany, Russia was losing. They, they lost a bunch of battles, so much so that they had a revolution, okay? So in the east, war is over. They, they sign a peace treaty with, um, with the Germans, well, not immediately, but, but eventually. Um, but they're busy fighting a civil war. So, so Russia's out of the war. Um, now the war is between Germany and France. And Germany kind of thinks, hey, I got this, okay? France didn't have as good trenches, as, and England didn't have as good trenches and a good trench system like Germany did. And they felt they had the high ground, they, they weren't living in the mud the way that the French and the English were, and they just thought, look, we, we got these guys. Um, all we have to do is cut off their supply line. Now I got into this in an earlier lecture, but their supply lines were being provided by the United States. So the idea was, all right, let's cut off this submarine supply or this ship supply line with our new submarines and um, <clears throat> they'll, they'll quit and we'll win. Um, this thing's almost over. Big mistake, we know, because that brings that unrestricted submarine warfare, that attack against US ships bringing supplies to and from England causes the US to join the war. And this of course is gonna lead to the end of the war. Um, <clears throat> so um, in March of 1918, after already starting unrestricted submarine warfare, um, cutting off supply lines temporarily, the Germans attacked the French and the English, and they're stopped at the, ba the Battle of the Marne, the second Battle of the Marne by French, Moroccan soldiers who had come across to help, help out the French in this battle. And the very, very first wave of American soldiers had shown up, 140,000 fresh American soldiers. So not only are we... Um, bring in a bunch, but none of them have fought. They're not tired, they're, they're ready to go. Um, and, and Germany loses. Okay, they get stopped and they get pushed back. As the Americans start pouring in along the Pacific coast of France, the Germans are now getting pushed back and getting pushed back and getting pushed back, largely by the Americans, you guys. Um, so um, they break through German lines, really in a large part because of the tank. The tank first is seen on the battlefield in 1916, but it had tires and it used to get stuck in the mud. So the new improved tanks now that we're seeing coming out of this era have the kind of um, conveyor belts, I guess. I don't know what these things are called that, that um, make the tank go instead of tires they can get through mud this was a muddy area and now the trenches aren't effective right the, the tanks are rolling across the battlefields bullets are bouncing off bouncing off the, the soldiers can hide behind the tanks as the machine guns are, are, are bouncing their bullets right off the tank tanks roll over the barbed wire over the tanks soldiers pour into the trenches really pushing through, breaking through enemy lines. The tank is the difference maker in World War I. Um, and, and it will be the major weapon of war for, for the next, gosh, I don't know, 50, 70 years. Um, so, so again, we're, I'm going to shrink this up. Um, the Germans lose. They're getting pushed back. On September 29th, uh, the general... Ludendorff informs German leaders that they lost. He said, "Now we need we need to ask for peace." Okay, it's um, it's getting to be too close to now getting into our major cities. Um, <clears throat> the Allied forces, though the British and the French and, and the Americans, didn't want to deal with the German government. They didn't want to deal with um, King William II said, you need to get a new government in there if we're going to make peace with you. Um, so in, in Germany, they start putting together a, a, a 
new government, a social democratic government. It's called, they're called the social democrats. Um, and they're gonna have liberal ideas in their government. Remember, liberal ideas, 1800s liberal ideas, we're talking about democracy, equality under the law, voting for your leaders, all of the things that, that are part of our government that most people love about our government. Um, on November 3rd, there, there's a mutiny of soldiers, and a few days later, William steps down. At first, he resists, then he steps down, and this new social democratic group takes over Germany on November 11th, 1918, 11-11, and famously, they signed the peace treaty at 11-11, okay? Um, make a wish. <laughs> no, but this is why we celebrate Veterans Day on November 11th, right? Memorial Day and, and Labor Day is always Mondays, but Veterans Day itself is one holiday that is always on the 11th, no matter what day of the week that falls on. So um, <clears throat> it, it's after this, this moment. Um, all the while, while this is going on, um, um, and all the while, while this has been happening and then the new peace agreements are being made and signed and, and stuff, um, there are Germans who are not happy with the peace agreement. And, and for understandable reasons that we'll get into later, but a group of socialists, communists, these aren't evolutionary socialists, these aren't social democrats, these are hardcore communists, these are Marxist socialists. Um, they try, and remember Russia just is in the middle of its own civil war, they try to start its own, their own civil war in Germany, to push for communism in Germany. And they did not want a liberal democracy in Germany. Um, and the Germans crush the rebellion in Berlin. They crush the rebellion in the South, in the um, Southern city of Munich is a um, Catholic city. Um, and the communists are, are done. But, and this is a little bit of foreshadowing, it really scares the Germans, okay? Um, the German people, didn't like the idea that there were uprisings in their own country against their new government. And, and, and there, were, there was bloodshed in the street. This isn't like, um, you know, some, some protests or, or something. This was, this was death. Um, and it leaves the Germans with a fear of communism. Okay, so just keep that in mind as we move forward. Why do the Germans so afraid of communism? Is it, is it the Russians? Well, yeah, but it's also that, that the people within their own country, the, the communists within their own company, country that tried to overthrow the government. Um, no one likes attempted coups in their country. They're, they're wildly unpopular. Um, and as time goes on, they, they become less and less popular. People realize exactly what had just happened. Um, in Austria-Hungary, who fought with the Germans, um, this country falls apart and, and they break up into four countries. Austria-Hungary is gone, okay? And instead we have Austria, separate country, Hungary, separate country, Czechoslovakia. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Czechoslovakia was made up of Czechs and Slovakians. This is gonna be a problem. They're different ethnic groups. Speaking of different ethnic groups, they also create this country called Yugoslavia, which is made up of a bunch of different ethnic groups. It's made up of the Serbs of Serbia, the Romanians, who are largely um, Slavic as well. Um, but then the Kosovoans, the Albanians, there's a large Muslim population there. They, they really kind of squish all these countries that were in the Balkans that were ruled by the Ottoman Empire together into a country called Yugoslavia. Keep an eye out. That's going to be a trouble spot as well, although that won't really be a trouble spot. Neither Czech or Yugoslavia will be trouble spots until the 90s. But it's going to continue to be a problem moving forwards. Um, and, and yes, um, we're going to find out that, that those countries and, and other newly created countries are going to be problem spots for the next decades, for the next century, um, until today, arguably. 
And it just kind of goes to show like the challenges. And I don't know what the right call would have been. I, I don't think that they made the exact right call, but trying to redraw countries, redraw lines on a map and decide where each line should be drawn. This can be extremely challenging, especially if you don't know the neighborhood. You're trying to keep all the, you know, ethnic Germans here and the ethnic Slavs here and the Croats here and the Albanians or you know, Muslims here. And um, maybe we're trying to, to, to draw lines in, in, into the desert and, and we're going to, you know, ignore ethnic groups like the Kurds. All of this we're going to get to in our next lecture. but. It is a, a challenge um, that we're going to find out was handled very poorly after World War I.